Assalamu alaikum, welcome, welcome to your second video in the ICT IDCS E storage, which is chapter number three. Previously, we learned about the difference between the storage device and storage media, and we learned that storage devices used use storage media to save the data, and all all the the, the media that saves your data permanently is known as non-volatile. We also learned that there are three types of uh, storage media: the magnetic one the optical ones and the solid state one and we started with the magnetic ma magnetic type we learned about in magnetic storage and magnetic B magnetic uh, devices or media we learned about the hard disk drives we le we also learned about the fat uh, allocation table or the the st uh, storing system of the operating system and of course there are other uh, file systems that are there but this is the one that we learned about and mentioned on the book we also learned about the fixed or the built-in hard disk drive and the portable hard disk drive uh, in everyday's language we call it the external hard disk drive or external hard disk on the book it says portable in this video we're going to start with we're going to continue with magnetic tapes drives and tapes Again, uh, the magnetic tape drive is the device and the tapes is the media, right? Or are the media, right? Okay, so before I read the, the, the definition or the explanation over here, I'm going to give you a, a, a brief um, explanation as to what are they going to explain to us. They're going to explain to us that magnetic tapes store data exactly the same way as magnetic disks do, using, of course, magnetics, right? but the difference is that in magnetic tapes it saves the data in a very over here it says in a long line on the tape rather than being scattered over the surface of a disk so it's a tape right they have to start at the beginning and then go to the next the next the next the next and on and on right but on uh, if we're using a disk uh, the disk or the pin that reads from the disk can go from uh, for example, um, storage number zero to storage number million in less than a second, right? In a split second, right? So this is what they're trying to explain to us over here. So let's get started. Magnetic tapes store data in a similar way to how data is stored in a magnetic disk. The same way. The tapes store data exactly as the disks, right? The only difference is that this, the data is stored in a long line on the tape rather than being scattered over the face of a disk. It's the, it saves that on a tape rather than on a disk. The magnetic tape drive is the device that drives the tape around and read and write the heads. Again, the device is not the media. It's the device that reads from the tape, right? Okay, in this next part, they're going to explain to us that it takes some time if you're using a, a tape, it's going to take some time to go from the beginning of the tape to the part of the tape where you want to access that data yeah so let's get started on the tape the data is read and written by a read and write heads similar to those used in magnetic disks similar as in the hard disk drive for example however while the read and write head in the desk device moves to the correct position on the desk to access the data the read and write head is a magnetic tape reader stays still and the tape moves past it so it, it when when we're using hard disks the pin or the read and write head moves to where the data is but when we are using a device for tapes magnetic tapes the tape is the thing that is moving so that you get to the uh, to you get access to the data where the data is on the tape right this means that data that is at the far end of the tape will take a long time to be found because all the other data before it will have to be read first so they have to read a b c d if you want to get to the z that means you're going to have to read all the alphabets alphabets here represents the data that you want to get to if it's a, an image or a video or a file document whatever it is this sort of storage is called serial storage right serial serial right Serial storage means that the data is stored one piece after the other. Okay, in this next part, they're going to compare how the computer access data or how the user, user access data. Uh, we have, so far, we have three types. Okay, if the data is arranged in some sort of order, 
for example, uh, perhaps maybe alphabetical order, this would speed up finding a particular data items because the device could fast forward or move through the unwanted bits. This form of storage is called sequential storage. If you have the data arranged, for example, alphabetical or from the biggest to the smallest, then th uh, the computer would be able to find that f uh, quicker, right? In a, in a more sh uh, in a short time. Uh, this type of uh, uh, sto storing is called sequential storing, right? Over here we have serial storage. Now we have sequential storage, and and it gives faster access to data than serial storage. Uh, sequential storage is actually faster than s uh, serial storage but is still slow compared to the direct access to data on the hard disks so hard disks use direct access it's gonna go straight to where your file is right this is called direct access uh, direct access and if your data is arranged alphabetically on a tape then it would it would try to find the data in a sequen sequential storage but in magnetic tapes data are stored as they come if you have a if you took a picture it will sp it will store in a another picture it will, it will be stored in b but there's no arranged data there's no organizational system right this is called serial storage okay so the book here has given us uh, an activity or sort of um, a visual thing to understand how data can be stored uh, here over here in this side the left side is a data that is stored randomly like you have orange yellow pink there's no order for the for the data that is stored and basically the data here is colors right this is a cartridge of a printer okay and whenever the printer wants to print a color it has to go and look for the cartridge that has the color for example right so in a whenever the like for example the printer wants to print brown it's gonna start from the beginning orange no yellow no pink no brown yo this is it right it took us a lot of time we had to start from the beginning to search for brown okay but on the on the right on the right side you have B B the data is stored alphabetically right so for example if I want to print the color G I'm gonna start with the first letter only B and G there it is green yeah so data is stored it has a, a system that or an organizational system that is stored with right okay over here it says inside a data cartridge cartridge is like the the, the pack that stores the ink on a printer we studied that earlier showing the magnetic tape in a the colors or data are in the random order so the read and write head has to move along the tape until it finds this, the, the requested color but in B the colors are stored in alphabetical order which means the read and write head can fast forward to the correct part of the, of the tape okay now let's read a little bit more about sequential the sequential way of storing data okay sometimes the sequential way that data is stored on a tape is very useful for example the payroll of a, of a large company is processed once a month what is a payroll a payroll is the system where all the employees gets paid at the end of the month or maybe at the beginning of the month right this is the system and usually is handled by HR employees yeah so for example, the payroll of a large company is processed once a month. It is important that everyone gets paid. Everybody has to get paid. Okay? If the data is stored on a tape, then everyone's data has to be read and there is no danger of missing someone. There's no danger of missing someone out. The same is true of utility bills. These needs to be sent to every customers on particular dates so what they're trying to explain to us here is that sequential data might be useful for situations where you have to go through each and every uh, package of data that is stored on your system magnetic tapes they're trying to explain here that magnetic tapes are useful they are used where there is a need to store large amount of data just remember that everybody is making fun of tapes because it's old technology but 
over here they are saying that they are used where there is a need to store a large amount of data and they're not talking about your personal computer or your cell phones and where the speed of access is not important you need to store a lot a lot a lot of data but you, whenever you want to access them the speed is not important for example storing backups where a lot of data needs to be stored you want to make a backup copy for a large amount of data tapes is your thing this includes na national archives governmental things movies banks as well as sci uh, science such as um, particle physics and much more firms firms such as Google Gmail Microsoft use magnetic tape store storage okay so now we're done with magnetic storage and magne magnetic uh, uh, media tapes devices and media now we're gonna move on to optical storage media and devices now let me try to make it simple it started with it started with a CD and then we had a DVD and then we had a blu-ray disc blu-ray all right but then you always find these letters or abbreviations in front of each and every one that's why we're going to go in depth into this part optical storage media and devices use light from lasers to read and write data that's why they're called opticals because they use light optical media includes compact discs CDs digital versatile discs DVDs and blu-ray discs those are the three types of discs that that are available in this optical storage they can store different amounts of data for example the CD can store up to 700 megabytes which is not that much right and then we have the DVDs they can store up to 4.7 gigabytes which is fine okay but then we have the blu-ray disc that can store up to 128 GB which is really good okay so now we know that the three types of desks sorry discs and the amount of capacity that they can take right now let's move on they should have some letters after them to say what type they are whether they are a CD DVD or a blu-ray there's a letter that comes after their name that tells you what they are or the main types are ROM stands for read only or it could be R only so CD-ROM is a read only memory these cannot be written to only read from for example if you buy an album for a singer or an artist uh, from a from a, an official company for example Sony Records or maybe uh, Warner Brothers those companies they only sell read only memory so that you don't edit or tamper with the contents right so that's ROM it could be CD-ROM or DVD-ROM now the R stands for recordable ROM is read only memory but R is recordable these can be written to just once okay so now those are the ones that once we write on them we cannot erase or edit and then can only be read from the CDR or the DVDR so R is short for recordable now then we have RW RW stands for rewritable these can be written to multiple times CDRW or DVDRW so if you have CD ROM that means the data is there you cannot write or read uh, sorry you cannot write or edit that okay if if it's CDR you can write to it once you can copy something on it once okay but then RW which is the best kind you can read and write you can erase you can copy something on it as many times as you want just like a flash drive for example imagine that you have a flash drive that has a software but you can only download that software or install it from that flash drive this is a ROM again this is an example there's no such thing as a flash ROM right and then you have a CD that's R that means it's empty there's nothing in there but you can copy something on it once once it's copied you can never erase that or edit that now the comfortable type is the RW which which stands for rewritable this one you can read and write you can write to it multiple times now here's an interesting part um, 
An optical disc has a single spiral track running from the inside to the outside. The spiral track is over one, sorry, five kilometers wrong. Now again, we all know that uh, data is stored on a memory. It represents eith either zero or one. Now let's read this part just to know that how data is stored on a CD or a DVD that represents zero and one. That's like the, the five kilometer thing that they said, you know, the disc uh, rotates or circles around itself and then the laser is reflected on the CD. Okay, let's read. They will have a better explanation than this. When CDs and DVDs are produced, digital data is stored along the track by itching pits. Itching pits. Those are the itching pits. Itching pits onto the surface of the disc with a laser in the optical storage device. So the device is producing that laser. The disc, uh, the disc between the pits is called a land. Those things are called land. When the light from a laser hits the lens, it is reflected back to a detector. So when the light is produced by the laser, when it falls on the disc or the DVD, if it's reflected back to the detector, the light is scattered away by the pits and no light is detected. That is if there's no, nothing in there. Those are two events represents the digits 0 and 1. So if there's a light reflected, reflecting back to the device, that maybe that's a 1. If there's no light, that's a 0, right? Now, in the, in the right-hand side, they're going to explain to us how CDR, which is recordable, right over here, R is for recordable and DVD-R, which is also recordable, how do they work? CDR and DVD-R. I invite you to read them on your time just so that you would know how do they work. And then they would explain to us the ROM, CD-ROM and DVD-ROM. Uh, again, we have three types. The ROM, the R, which is recordable, and then we have the uh, read and write, the ones that you can uh, write on them multiple times. The RW, rewritable, sorry, rewritable they will explain to you how each and every one work on that section that includes the rw cd rw and dvd rw let's jump to uh, the advantages of optical desks they are very cheap to be honest uh, they were very cheap and and you can you could have like back in my day you can find them anywhere on mobile stores tech technological stores computer stores they are easy to transport from one side to another you can carry them on your pocket or on your backpack uh, by a dozen sometimes the disadvantages is that they do not store as much data as a hard disk drive uh, the only good the, the only good ones when it comes to storage is the blu-ray which can store up to 128 uh, gigabytes they slow uh, have slow access speed they're not as fast as a hard disk drive it takes more time to read and write the data the last thing is the stored data degrades over time uh, you may get you may get it sc scratched by using it so many times okay before we move to solid state let's fix this uh, let's solve this table the true and false table together I'm going to give you three seconds to think about it before we answer together. Okay, the first one says, hard disk drives store data magnetically. Yes, they do. True. Hard disk drives, they do store data magnetically. All hard disk drives contain only one disk. that is false because hard disk drives have a stack of disks or we can we also call them platter so this is false fixed hard disk drives are more easily lost than portable ones false fixed hard disk drives they are fixed inside the computer if like if they are stuck inside with a nail on it how can we lose them, right? The portable ones are usually the ones that are easy to lose, right? Next is the advantages of magnetic tape over disk uh, drive storage is that data can be accessed randomly. Data can be accessed randomly 
in magnetic tapes and that is an advantage is this true or false it is false because disk drives is the kind that we access data randomly and not the magnetic tapes the magnetic tapes we, we access data bit by bit right data on a hard disk drive is re read and written using read and write head that is correct it is true in the next video we will continue with solid state storage media and devices which is the third type of storage the third and the last type of storage in this chapter so see you then